Hey guys, it's Phaedra from All Things Phaedra, and I'm on vacation, and I've brought you with me. So if you are planning a vacation or thinking about planning a vacation to Yellowstone National Park, the recent news may have you rethinking, is it worth the trip? Well, I encourage you to watch my previous video telling you about all the amazing things that you can see just in the South Loop. But I also wanted to share with you all of the things that you can do within a day's drive of Yellowstone. There's so much to do and the best part is I didn't pre-plan any of it. All of this we decided while we were here and we haven't missed out on anything. In fact, we really found some hidden gems in my opinion. So let me show you just some of the things that we found that you can do outside of Yellowstone. St. Anthony Dune Rentals offers two and four person dune buggies that you can use on St. Anthony Dunes. This is an area in Eastern Idaho that is a white sandy area, very desert-like and you can drive the dunes. And I just have to caution you that you should know what is over the top of the dune before you let your husband go flying over it. After that adventure, we decided to take a long drive out to Craters of the Moon National Monument in central Idaho, and this was one of my favorite destinations, a 2,000-year-old lava field. And this is a destination that we saw on the map and said, when are we going to get a chance to see this again? And I am so glad because if you ask me, this is a can't miss destination in central Idaho. It's very accessible for people that may have mobility issues. But if you're looking for adventure, you can go into the caves. A permit just simply means you fill out a form at the visitor center. You walk through the lava fields and then you actually get to climb into an old lava tube. Make sure you have good shoes for this because you will be climbing down and over and up. We also did some mountain climbing. Well, okay, cinder cone climbing. This is inferno cone. Our next adventure was into Wyoming to see Grand Tetons, and you must stop at Victor Emporium for their famous Huckleberry Shakes. It's literally on your way, and once you get to Grand Teton, go to the Visitor Center. They'll help you plan out your day. They recommended we start at Jenny Lake with a round-trip boat ride, and once we got to the other side, we did a beautiful hike up to Inspiration Point. We did hikes together. There are waterfalls along the way to reward your effort, but wait until you see the view at the top. Oh, this isn't the top. This is only halfway. There's the top. And don't forget to look for little critters while you're up there. This is also a great park for other wildlife. We saw a mama moose and her baby along the shoreline. And this is a common merganser. He was actually putting on a show for the ladies. And if you see some wild deer, make sure you know how to call them. Hey, buddy. Outside of the west entrance in West Yellowstone is the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center where you can get up close and personal with grizzly bears because hopefully you haven't done that in the park. You'll also see wolves that are part of their captive breeding program. One of my favorites, the ground squirrels. It was hard to get them to keep still for a shot. Also injured birds of prey. That's why he's yelling. Yeah, and river otters.
As we left the Yellowstone area, we headed out towards an area called Virginia City, Montana. We were rewarded with some great views like this. Virginia City is an old gold mining town that's been restored. There are lots of shops and restaurants, although they weren't very friendly in that store, unfortunately. And there's also a lot of history in the town, so you can learn a little bit more of what life was like. About an hour from Bozeman, Montana, are Lewis and Clark Caverns State Park. We chose a two-hour classic cave tour, which involved a three-quarter mile hike up the side of this mountain. That's the original entrance to the cavern. And when we went a little further down, we got to see some of the natural inhabitants of the cave, the bats. Now we had to be very quiet and keep the lights on only briefly and wear masks in this area. But I marvel at the stairs. It is a tight squeeze, so you have to be pretty mobile to do this tour, but each one of those limestone steps took 600 hours to carve. I won't bore you with lots of shots of the caverns because it's one of those things that you have to be there to truly appreciate. This is one of the best cavern tours I've ever been on, and we actually got to see what it would have been like back in the day to see the caverns by candlelight. On our way back to Bozeman, I stopped at Madison Buffalo Jump State Park. This is literally a limestone cliff where the Native Americans would drive herds of buffalo off of the edge. Take the quarter mile walk, it's a simple walk, up to the plaza where you can learn all about how the Native Americans accomplished this. It's pretty amazing. After an evening in Bozeman, we decided to spend our last day at the Museum of the Rockies, known for their dinosaurs. But my favorite part was the planetarium. They have different shows all day long. We actually saw two of them. But if you are into dinosaurs, they have an amazing exhibit. I mean, where else can you see the different life stages of a Triceratops? aren't your thing, you might enjoy this exhibit on the history of Yellowstone tourism. And there is a kid section. Outside of the museum is an example of a homestead back from the 1860s. Did you have any idea there was that much to do in the West? And this was just in a very small area surrounding the southern and western part of Yellowstone. If you're staying to the north, if you're staying to the east, there's even more to discover. But I just wanted to take you along and I'm glad you came. Let me know if you've been to any of these places or if you're planning to go to any of these places. I'd love to hear and I'd also love to hear your suggestions about what other places you've visited in the Yellowstone area. Until next time, I hope you hit a like on this video. That really helps me out. And more importantly, please subscribe so you can come back and go on more adventures with me and hopefully inspire you to go on adventures of your own.